watching uh, the front row, we are talking about uh, the Nairobi County, uh, the city at a crossroads. Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko, whose head is currently on the line, has not once or twice complained about frustrations by the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. There's been a lot of push and pull between him and uh, the NMS, as uh, the president once in a while has attempted to step in and ask them not to politicize this particular situation. Uh, senior political affairs reporter Patrick Amimo worked on a piece on this. Let's take a look at that. Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko made the submissions in a virtual meeting with the Senate Committee on Health on the standoff between the county government and the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, NMS. In his submissions, Sonko claimed the city is choking in heaps of uncollected garbage. He accused the NMS of running a parallel county government. So this issue of receiving orders from above, we are being intimidated with court cases, impeachment motions, but enough is enough, Mr. Chair. We are ready for anything, but we will stand with the truth. And we know all the COVID billionaires have landed in Nairobi through the mess to steal county funds. A lot allowed. That one will never happen, Mr. Chair. Sonko told Senate that in a letter dated 15th October 2020, the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary made it clear that there lacks a legal framework to transfer Nairobi City County Government funds to the Nairobi Metropolitan Service, currently domiciled in the Executive Office of the President. Sonko says this has paralyzed operations in the health sector and all other sectors of the county government. If the serious national government is scared of giving them money, uh, Mr. Chair. one problem you're having, Mr. Chair, these NMS people, the officers, are only interested with paying pending, pending bills, Mr. Chair. And we should ask ourselves this question, Mr. Chair. Why should they be interested to clear pending bills which they do not incur, Mr. Chair? Unless we put our foot on the ground, just like we did in the revenue formula and other matters, this Nairobi will just rot and nothing can happen. Patrick Amimo, KTA News. Right, so here is where we are now. Governor Sonko complaining that the NMS is running a parallel uh, county government and also he has opted to financially frustrate uh, the moves uh, by NMS. Currently we are aware um, that the courts have stopped a 27 uh, million shilling uh, fund to the NMS through some of the key functions that were transferred. Ishmael Naribo, you were talking to us about the legal implications of the creation of NMS and that we are in this mess right now. How do we get out? Well, as uh, one commentator spoke just a while ago, I mean, it's a choice. The Nairobi County Governor actually agreed to signing an agreement with the central government. And, and, and that's, that's law, I mean, that's legal. You have signed an agreement with the central government. It is based on provisions of the County Government Act and the Intergovernmental Relationship Act. So, at the end of the day, you have agreed that following certain provisions of the law, we will have to transfer certain functions. But does it does it mean to anything? The does to it the central government. Sorry to cut you short, but does it mean anything that he later came and yes. alleged that he was intoxicated? He didn't have time to go through what he was signing. He in <laughs> fact admits that he signed a document he didn't quite read. Does it mean anything? Akisa, what does that mean to Kenyans? I mean, we have a governor, a honorable governor, His Excellency, the President, uh, the, His Excellency, the Governor of Nairobi. You cannot make such remarks that I did a certain activity or action so serious like transferring some functions to the central government because I was under influence of alcohol. That is, uh, I, I think, one of the most best thing you can do. And it shows how much you disregard uh, the, the electorate, for the Nairobi residents. So, so I think the Honorable Governor might have said that, but I honestly think uh, that's a, sort of a joke. He didn't mean to say that he was drunk. I mean, he signed that, and it is now in written. If it is in written, it has already been transmuted into the legality of what NMS is doing. Now, having said that, I also want to emphasize that uh, the head of state did not make a proposal to the Honorable Sonko 
probably because it was a casual thing. He, as the head of state, uh, Akisa, you see he has certain responsibility as the head of this nation. What do I do with Nairobi? Like somebody hinted already, Nairobi is the center. This is where we have the United Nations headquarters in the region. This is where we have international media correspondents who can report anything tomorrow. They can go to the back street and look at the garbage which is choking the city and report in the international media. This is where we have an economic hub like no other in the East African region. I mean, you can compare this to South Africa, Egypt. This is a very important nation if you want to understand the security of the region. So the so president Nairobi was not right just a in coming county, in. If you ask me. So the president was right in coming oh, in. Definitely, definitely. The, definitely the president has an interest in terms of protecting citizens as a whole. And therefore he has to come in. But he made a proposal. Can we do this or we cannot? Now, Akisa, before I end up, before I finish. Remember, the governor did not appoint the deputy governor for a long time. Mm. So the way things have been run in Nairobi, there is that gap. And I think the head of state had every mandate, every right to come in and try to resolve the impasse, to try to find out a solution, not just for the people of Nairobi, but for the people of Kenya. Because this is the face of the country. Right. Once people fly in into Kenya, this is the real face of the country. Right. And before I go to Kisia, because I'd really like to hear his thoughts on um, the whole creation of the NMS and its performance so far. You say the president was right in coming in to salvage the city, but isn't it the president's party, which he is a party leader, that nominated Sonko, that campaigned for Sonko, uh, but, and he finally won the gubernatorial seat in this city. Sonko was not a surprise. We've known the kind of man he is since he joined politics. Is it, is it not pretentious? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, I, I don't think it's pretentious. There are several dynamics, uh, Akisa, which happened since 2017, if you ask me. I don't think we are where we were in 2017 and in 2016. We are totally in new dynamics today. So I think some people made decisions in 2016 that they kind of regret and uh, would love to uh, correct them at any available opportunity. And therefore, even though Jubilee appointed the Honorable uh, 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 Governor of Nairobi, His Excellency Mike Mbovisonko. The truth is, those dynamics have changed. Probably Mike Sonko was needed in Jubilee so much before, but probably now he is not as much needed as he then was needed previously. So things change, and I don't think you can say it's pretentious. It's just like you talk about handshake. Is handshake pretentious? I don't believe so. So right. dynamics change, and dynamics have changed for the Honorable Mike Sonko. All right. I want to quickly uh, pick your mind, uh, Mr. Kisia. I understand uh, uh, Professor Alfred Omenia is with us, but let me pick your mind on the creation of the Nairobi Metropolitan Services and the push and pull that we are seeing. Governor Sonko constantly saying that there are two centers of power. How will they be able to operate and ensure service deliver delivery with these two entities working as silos? Now, um uh, Akisa, first of all, I don't, think, I don't think there are two centers of power because uh, Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko remains the governor of Nairobi. What Mike Sonko did was to cede some functions. And it is not fair to say that the president actually uh, uh, took action. It is Mike Sonko himself who submitted himself to the president and requested for intervention. And as uh, Ismail has said, the president of this republic has, um, you, you know, has an interest in the capital city. Because if Nairobi does not function, not only Kenya will collapse, the whole region, East and Central Africa, will collapse. Because this is a hub of East and Central Africa, in terms of finance, in terms of communication, in terms of security. Therefore, the president had an interest. He's an interested party. He had to step in. But he stepped in after Mike Mbuvi Sonko himself submitted himself to the president and requested for intervention, which was given. Now, um, as to whether that decision was right or wrong, I mean, it's an intervention. It's a stopgap measure. What we should be asking ourselves is what do we do in future to avoid 
such a situation, what measures do we need to put in place? What do we need to correct? Is it the constitution? Is it the quality of people that we are putting in the office? So if those things are not corrected, and uh, I, I'm saying to those people who are driving the BBI, if those issues are not dealt with now, we are likely to face the same challenges in future. So um, General Badi, in my view, has about four major functions delegated to him. If I was Sonko, I would ride on uh, Major Badi, who seems to be having goodwill from the state, because I would take Badi, as, uh, to, as the Swahilis would say, Mutuangwa Mukono. So use Badi to deliver what you promised Nairobians. He should not fight uh, Badi, because Badi really is there for another 14, 15, 16 months, and he'll be back in the barracks. But Mike Sonko still has a, a bright political future. Mm. Let him uh, take advantage and ride over uh, what Badi is currently doing. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Professor Alfred Omenia now joining us by way of Zone Prof. Thank you very much for joining us. Just looking at where Nairobi is now, the uh, impeachment of Governor Sonko by the County Assembly. The Senate is expected to sit tomorrow. We are conversing issues on what is the biggest headache in Nairobi that we seem to not be getting right. Yeah, thank you very much, Akisa. In fact, uh, uh, sorry I couldn't join this earlier. I'm, I'm on transit. Um, Yes, but uh, uh, listening to this, um, uh, you know, we need to actually be honest uh, about the problems of Nairobi and, and the problems predate uh, the new constitution. The problems have, with governance of Nairobi have been there literally from independence. And, and at the core of it, really, is selfishness of politicians. Even, even when Nairobi was being shifted to, you know, to commission in, in earlier times, it was simply that the people wanted Nairobi, um, you know, for the, to loot, literally, uh, for their own purposes. And as uh, the different speakers have actually said, and this is common sense, Nairobi is not an ordinary county. Nairobi is the capital city of Kenya, is a constitutional capital city. Uh, so I think um, it is lack of imagination to imagine that Nairobi could be governed um, as any other county. Uh, and our position has always, always been clear that we need a special statute to govern Nairobi, or we actually remove Nairobi as capital, the, Kenya's constitutional capital. So that uh, the functions that happen in Nairobi, including being the seat of government, being the seat of different arms of government, being uh, uh, like, like uh, 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 Kizia was uh, highlighting there, um, the, the home of the diplomatic community, all that can be dispersed in other cities uh, in Nairobi. But we know that there are selfish interests that uh, benefit from, uh, from Nairobi as such. Then the, they've always been uh, of the position that uh, if you put a stupid person, a weak person that can manipulate uh, to run the city, then it will actually work for their own interest. Nairobi is captive of those selfish interests. Jubilee uh, picked Sonko uh, to run Nairobi for selfish reasons. We know that for a fact. Let's not hide behind anything. We know very well that Jubilee was aware all along that Sonko did not have the credentials, Sonko did not have the ability, Sonko did not have the temperament, Sonko did not have the qualification to even run a chicken house in Nairobi. Yet Jubilee picked him as governor because somehow people in Jubilee believed that they could actually manipulate him and, um, and, uh, and, and, and run the city through the back door. In fact, there was a stupid story that uh, somehow Poli Kapigade would be the one running the city, while Sonko, I don't know what, what he was actually going to do. And, 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 and fixing Nairobi really has, uh, we must step backwards and, and realize that um, Nairobi is a significant uh, city in this country and uh, it, it should not actually just fall into whims. Of, uh, of individuals. I believe Jubilee and even ODM could have picked competent candidates to run Nairobi. And, 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 and going forward on this particular debate about N NMS, uh, what are the reasons why, why of course, Nairobi must, must be run as, as, uh, as a political entity is because uh, us as Nairobians, we, we must get to presentation. There are two things. We are not just a bunch of people receiving services. We are citizens of a particular entity and we are entitled to representation. That is what Sonko was trying to do. Of course, he, he has no clue how to do it in the past instance. Then, of course, there's a, uh, the issue around competence, uh, around service delivery. As somebody who believes that they can actually run the city uh, by, by, by supplying water to a few individuals that don't have through uh, their own private uh, nonsense, I don't know, Sonko rescue team, he's not qualified. He's very poorly qualified to run the city. 
But going forward, you still see the same selfish interests being used to shape the governance of the city. We need to step back and say, look here, are we going to keep Nairobi as a constitutional capital? And if you're going to do that, then we have to create special legal instruments. We, we need to create special statutes to run the city. Uh, it cannot just be the whims of the president, really, uh, because General Badi doesn't represent. On the other hand, Songo can deliver. So we are caught between, between uh, a rock and a hard place. That on one hand, um, the presidency and, and I, some of those fellows uh, that hung around the presidency plus Jubilee, uh, I mean, plus ODM, believe somehow that um, uh, Nairobians will be satisfied by simply getting services without representation. That will not work. And then on the other hand, there are those who believe that Nairobi uh, can, can, can survive with representation without services, Akasongo followers. That also doesn't make very, uh, doesn't make sense. We're in a bad place. We need to step back. We need to make hard decisions about this city. If it's going to remain the capital city, then we need to actually create special instruments mm -hmm. to run it. If yep. it's not yep. going to remain capital city, yes. then in fact, uh, uh, you know, the judiciary can go to, to the courts and uh, the executive can move to Isiolo. And uh, there's nothing magical about, uh, you know, Nairobi remaining uh, right. everything. In fact, Nairobi is being run right. by speculators. Uh, and, uh, and these crazy landowners mm -hmm. and thieves and political charlatans, mm -hmm. fellows who've never run anything successfully, and they're the ones who are actually not interested in the city running the way it should. Uh, and prof, these are the fellows who've uh, held prof, the city. Uh, prof, let me just cut you short. Uh, um, we are now in a conversation on amending uh, bits of the constitution, and you're part of the team that um, have been vouching for Nairobi to not be treated as an ordinary county, perhaps uh, have it under the national government. <coughs> Uh, the, the management and leadership of it all. Why do you harbor this sentiment about the city? You see, the thing is that uh, uh, incompetence for me is incompetence, regardless of, uh, of, uh, of where it's coming from. Um, national government has not shown competence anyway. They just have a lot of money which they waste. Incidentally, the uh, corruption that happens in this country is mainly concentrated in national government, that it runs into billions. Uh, and, 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 and for me, that is actually not the solution. The solution is not, Nairobi should not remain an ordinary county because we know it's not. On the other hand, Nairobi should not just be run by an appointee of the president because on, uh, Nairobi is actually a political entity. And that's why we are of the opinion that uh, it is important that uh, we sit and say, fine, uh, a particular uh, uh, law needs to be crafted that then uh, is used to run the capital city. If, if there's consensus that in, in that particular arrangement, then, uh, then uh, you know, the national government plays a role, uh, that is fine. But uh, at the core of it, there must actually be representation. We cannot just accept that uh, the president will appoint for us a minister to run because Nairobi remains a political entity where representation is important. On the other hand, of course, Nairobi also becomes uh, an, an important uh, entity in terms of service provision. Yeah, and that's partly why these special instruments need to be created. Otherwise, if Nairobi was an ordinary county like any other, uh, then in fact, we would, we would actually have no issue. We would just go with the representation, and then those who are uh, elected there, even if you didn't put any qualification, even if you're a jailbird, or you're somebody whose education is questionable, or you had no experience in running anything, then you qualify to run because those are the credentials that you put for running uh, other, uh, other, other counties. Nairobi is a special county, that is common sense, and the reason why we don't have special instruments for running Nairobi is simply political interest and selfish interest by those who are in power. Prof, you've said a lot. I'd like uh, Jonathan Mweke as well as Philip Kisia to react on this. And Ishmael Naribu will specifically speak about, uh, to us about that suggestion to perhaps um, craft very specific laws that will run this particular city. I'll start with you, Jonathan Mweke. Your thoughts on uh, the insights there by Professor Omenya. Yeah, thank you, uh, Akisa. Um, are you talking about thoughts of Nairobi and BBI or...? Nairobi perhaps should not be treated as an ordinary county, and we've mentioned that before. Uh, the professor is talking about crafting laws to run the city, and that the reason we are here today is because of a pure political interests that the professor clearly articulates. Yeah, I, do, I don't think that's where the problem is. Uh, the problem is in leadership, Pakisa. Uh, you see, organizations are run by people. So even if you take the organization from the county level, and then you take it to the national level, and then you appoint the wrong person to do the job, you're still going to have the same problems. So I, I think what we need to do is we need to fix the leadership problem. 
Uh, and the why we are in a leadership crisis right now in Nairobi is because we don't seem to want to follow the law. Chapter 6 of our constitution is a chapter on leadership and integrity. This chapter, in very simple terms, tells you what a Kenyan of good manners should behave like. It tells you what a public servant should behave like, how they should give respect to their office, how they should behave privately or publicly in a way that brings respect to their office. What should happen if they are caught doing the wrong thing or breaking laws? But we just don't follow that. Now, we have a vetting process that allows us to vet our politicians before we elect them. They have to go to the DCI and get a certificate of good conduct. They have to go to the EACC and be cleared. They have to go to their political parties and be cleared. They have to go to the IEBC and be cleared. Uh, if you look very, very closely, and I support uh, Professor Omenya on this, our current governor did not meet the threshold to run for political office. In Article 10 of our Constitution, and in Chapter 6 of our Constitution. So I think we broke the law, and that's why we are paying this very, very heavy price, because it's, it's, a, it's a very expensive mistake uh, that we made. If we had just followed our laws, we'd probably have a governor today who'd still be in office and would not be talking about either going to the national government or talking about NMS or talking about impeachments. So I think going forward, my advice to Kenyans and to the powers that be is we have very good laws. Let's just follow them. And when we follow laws, then things begin to work. Institutions are strong and they're able to work. You have good leaders in those institutions. And then those institutions flourish and 190 will be served the way they should be served. One would argue that if indeed chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity was followed in this country, a lot of men and women in the office currently would not be there. This is not just a Sonko issue. That is, it's, it's, it's that is correct. Yeah, yes. But I'd like us to quickly take a break. Or when we get back, so how do we move forward with this county? Is NMS here to stay? What are we likely to, likely to see in the next dispensations? Keep tweeting. I'm seeing a lot of comments uh, from you and one of them here on Twitter. Uh, John Mutiso saying that State House handing over Nairobi to military is killing devolution. Why, wasn't the Why weren't the functions handed over to a civilian caretaker committee like previously? NMS is just acting out like a second wife trying impressively to outdo the lady of the house. We'll get more comments from Kenyans on their thoughts on uh, the administration currently and generally how Nairobi can move forward. You're watching The Front Row. Stay with us.